Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Warrenville City Council regular meeting for April 3rd, 2017. May I have a roll call, please? Alderman Ashour. Here. Alderman Berry. Here. Alderman Devere. Here. Alderman Davalos. Here. Alderman Goodman. Here. Alderman Hoffman. Here. Alderman Widener. Here. Alderman Wilson. Here. Thank you, Emily. Would you please stand as you're able and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have a public hearing scheduled this evening for our FY 2018 budget. So I, may I have a motion, please, to go into public hearing? Motion to go into public hearing. Second. Second. Take your pick, Emily. Okay. Um, uh, do we need a roll call for that? May I have a roll call then, please? Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Thank you, Emily. And to lead us off this evening, our Finance and Information Services Director, Kevin Dahlstrand. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in your backup tonight is a cumulative memo that uh, details all the changes that have been made to the proposed budget since the budget was distributed at the end of February. Um, one of the things that arose out of the budget meetings was that the decision pa 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 package forms themselves can also be a, uh, um, at times be a little confusing in that while they indicate a fund number, they do not indicate a fund name. When we provide you with the final replacement pay, 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 pay pages, all of the decision packages will now include that fund name as well. Um, all those have been changed and will be updated, updated for you when, you when you do receive your final replacement pay pages for the document. The hearing tonight um, is on what has been proposed. Changes can still be made before we do go final on this in two weeks, and I can entertain any questions you might have. Okay, John, do you have anything to add before we go into the questions? No, I think we'll just wait and respond to questions. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Goodman. I had a question about the $200,000 transfer from the Hotel Motel Tax Fund that isn't being um, made this year. I see on the first page of the memo that it's listed as an adjustment in the general fund, but on the second page of the memo, I don't see it as an adjustment in the hotel motel tax fund. You're absolutely correct, and that ought to be uh, um, noted in the memo. It, it's in the numbers, it just didn't get into the memo. Okay, just wanted to check that, thank yep. you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, seeing none, any public comment this evening on the budget? All right, I guess we can wrap it up then. May I have a motion then to go back into regular session? Motion to go out of uh, the public hearing. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Does that require a roll call also? Yes. All right, another roll call. Alderman Hoffman? Aye. Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Bevere? Aye. Alderman Berry? Aye. Alderman Goodman? Aye. Alderman Davalos? Aye. Alderman Widener? Aye. Alderman Ashour? Aye. Thank you, Emily. We'll go now to citizen comments. We have four folks who have signed up this evening, all veterans of the citizens' comments. And so you know that you go to the podium and give your name and address. We'll start with Connie Schmidt, then Vivian Lund, Bob Siebert, and Mary Jo Huber. Connie, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Connie Schmidt. I live on Landon uh, in Warrenville and in Drive. There was a report of another pedestrian being struck on Route 59 during the last week. Same place at Continental as it crosses 59 near the Dairy Queen. Um, this is really troubling because there's been so many of them, um, probably about four in the last 18 to 20 months. Um, I want to say hooray to our police department. Today, as I was driving south, there were police officer uh, uh, squad was sitting in the courtyard parking lot, 
keeping a close eye on the southbound traffic, and another squad was sitting south of Dairy Queen, keeping an eye on the northbound traffic. So I know we're trying to do something, but I think just the policing may not be enough. And obviously those guys are gonna have a few other things to do than just sit there and keep an eye on things. Um, about a month ago or maybe more, uh, a citizen comments were made in regard to the situation. And some suggestions were made, such as working to lower the speed limit on 59, improved signage for pedestrians on 59, and um, a better identified painted crossing, and perhaps improved lighting to help um, people see that this is designated. I really hope we move beyond just citizens' comments and uh, volunteer efforts at making this a reality because um, this is a dangerous thing. It's more, I mean, I was really on board with the great work that Fred and Stuart did for flooding for citizens in Summer Lakes, but this are lives at stake. So we real, I'm really hoping we move ahead with something rapidly um, from a city uh, point to help deal with this serious situation. Thank you, Connie. Vivian. Um, I'll be just as happy as um, a lot of you are. Uh, this time tomorrow night, <laughs> it'll be over. But I'm hoping that uh, all the yard signs come down with the same amount of energy as they went up and that uh, by the weekend, they're all gone. Um, and uh, as far as Connie's comment, uh, when we put that, uh, when we got the light, the traffic light on Route 59, um, it was probably around 1990. And um, um, I have seen flashing signs that say pedestrian crossing. Uh, you know, in advance of where there is a traffic light. And um, maybe the chief could look in, because it's a state highway, it has to be signed by the state. And so I think we're going to have to be pretty proactive at contacting the state, and I think the chief certainly knows how to get hold of who, who would help us. But that would be one thing that might be done. But I was just particularly concerned about the yard signs because there are a lot of them in the right of way and they shouldn't be in the right of way. They should be on private property. Yard signs don't vote. The people vote that have them in their yards and that's where they should be. So I'm, I'm, uh, keep hoping. <laughs> Thank you, Vivian. Bob Siebert, Albright Court. When Alderman Hoffman met with Paul Hines, the DuPage County clerk, there was a third person in the room. I was in the room. There were multiple meetings. In those meetings, multiple times, Paul Hines stated, in any TIF, individuals inside the TIF and outside the TIF receive higher property taxes due to the TIF. On March 21st, you folks at the table, at the podium up here, received an email from John Coakley. It stated, more development equals lower taxes because of additional property value. For a minute, let's assume this is true. Then, in 2011, when TIF 1 and TIF 2 became part of the property tax system, there would have been approximately 
a 50% reduction in the city of Warrenville's taxes to the existing taxpayers. However, nobody received this because that statement is incorrect. There is a plan and a procedure where you can increase property tax revenue for the city of Warrenville. You can have a reduction of property taxes on the city's portion for all property tax payers in Warrenville. You can reduce the city of Warrenville's tax rates to make investment in Warrenville more favorable for developers. You must remember that the goal of economic development is to ensure that the three sectors, the city of Warrenville, the Warrenville taxpayers, and the developers share in the benefits. Thank you, Bob. Mary Jo. Mary Jo Huber, Batavia Road. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that somebody's monitoring the floodgates with all the rain that we've had and we're expecting. I'd just like to be reassured. As far as taxes, I'm on Social Security and I'm willing to pay a little bit more, just a little bit, so in some of the other towns, to live in a town that's debt free, that has well maintained streets, snow plowing, and so on. Uh, if you drive any of the streets in Naperville, the side streets, they're not always in the best of shape. And finally, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the roundabout. I'm sure most people are. When it came up several years ago, and it was a big thing at the time, I was very, very vocal against it. If it came up tomorrow, I would still be very vocal against it. I think it's a bad thing. It just doesn't suit Warrenville. However, the mayor and several of the council members have stated it is not even being considered, and I take them at their word. The grant request was not granted, obviously, and there's no money, so there's no roundabout. Well, I don't always agree with the council or the mayor, and I do not hesitate to speak out about it. But when they say the roundabout is not even being considered, please believe them. The mayor and the council that are against this chorus of complaints only want the, the best for Warrenville and its citizens. I find it hard to believe that any staff member, knowing the controversy about the roundabout, would knowingly put it on the list anywhere even in the not being considered list or whatever. Why? Knowing it would cause exactly the controversy and hard feelings that we're seeing. Is it possible to bring forth a motion to table the roundabout discussion until the year 2030 or whatever date would reassure the concerned people? Granted, we don't know what the future might have in store for Warrenville, who knows? We might become part of Naperville, heaven forbid, and they might decide to redo the entire street in the town. Please, there must be some way to lay this thing to rest so we do not have to go through this every four years. Thank you, Mary Jo. We will move on to official and staff comments, beginning with the mayor. Um, this was a red letter day for our 911 provider, DUCOM. We had our groundbreaking for our new $16 million state of the art dispatch center on the county campus over in Wheaton. Uh, it's about a 34,000 square foot building, partly remodeled, an old building, and partly new, but it's going to be state of the art. As I said, it's going to serve. Uh, at this point, 44 police and fire agencies in the county. Um, when I uh, became chairman of the board in DUCOM, for DUCOM eight years, nine years ago, 
We served uh, 27 agencies and had 64 employees. We now serve 44 agencies and have 110 employees. So we've been working quite some time to find a new, new home that was suitable in size and uh, quality for our operation. In cooperation with DuPage County, we found that home, an underused building on the county campus that we're remodeling um, and adding on to, to again, have that state-of-the-art center. So it was a red letter day for DUCOM. It was a red letter day for the county and especially for the citizens that we serve because we'll be able to continue our high level of service at DUCOM and also have a platform for improvements as we move along because we're gonna have a facility that suits our needs. So that was very exciting. I'm sure you'll see it in the papers tomorrow. It's on our website if you'd like to see some of the details of um, how that went, but it was a really good day for us uh, and public safety, I might add. Um, I was gonna say something about the roundabout being dead, but Mary Jo did it for me. So thank you, Mary Jo. I'm not gonna say anything more, and I think after tonight, we probably won't have to worry about it again. Clerk? If you're not doing anything tomorrow, President Lincoln and Mrs. Lincoln will be at the, at the Park District at one o'clock talking about the government in their era. So I think it should be very interesting. I hope to see some of you there. Thanks. Thank you, Emily. Alderman, Alderman Bevere. Yeah, I was watching the river day and night. Uh, we had uh, two and three quarters of an inch of rain and we got up just below uh, 682. Uh, 2008, we were about eight feet higher than that. So uh, everything wasn't a real big storm, but uh, everything worked. West Chicago, USGS station started going down first, then Warrenville, then Naperville. So it went in a chain reaction for a change. And um, the gates were closed for a while, but uh, it only raised about another maybe a foot way after the gates were closed. So I was keeping an eye on it. The only thing, I, I might send some stuff to Ron. I look at the cameras every night before I go to bed, and I can see them. The storm came, and I couldn't read a thing. I don't know what it is, but when we, got a, when we have a situation going on, I saved the pictures right before, and you can't see a thing out there. Only when the storm's going on. <laughs> Tonight, I bet you can see them perfect. <laughs> I'll show it to you after the meeting, Ron. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, my, my discussions anecdotally with folks along the river indicate to me that our flood prevention efforts of the last few years have been very successful. The river is doing exactly as it's supposed to. It's moving into places that are provided for it and it's not threatening our homes and businesses as it has in the past. So um, I think that's a success story for this council and for the city over the past few years for addressing that problem in a very positive, effective way. Anyone else? Alderman Barry. Thank you. Um, ever since the um, referendum um, for the park uh, passed in November of 2016 in the presidential election, that's when we had it on the ballot, um, I was a little concerned because I couldn't understand the voting um, and um, the percentages that were used to claim that so many people are for the park. Um, I checked with the DuPage County uh, Board of Elections and in that election, uh, 8,872 people in the city of Warrenville did vote. And of those voters, 3,872 people voted yes, which is only 44% of the voters. The people who voted no were 2,157. That means that 2,841 people who were eligible to vote for the referendum on the park didn't vote. They either won didn't care about it, or two, they didn't have enough information to make an informed decision. So the way I look at the numbers, it means that 44% of the eligible voters voted yes, and 56% voted no 
or they didn't care. So at this time, I really think that this council is really listening to the voters and that we are going forward with the development on the property and not a park. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Alderman Davalos. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanna make one last comment. Maybe it will be the last comment. Um, on the roundabout, I just want to remind everybody something that may have been forgotten that may help you decide if we are serious up here about not doing the roundabout. We actually, back in the beginning of, of looking at this project, did receive a grant for a half a million dollars. And it was for, and I'm hoping I'm remembering the details correctly, it was sort of for pollution mitigation because it is well known that a roundabout, because you don't stop at a red light, um, you don't idle cars so much, and so there is less pollution with the roundabout. So we received that grant, and we are letting, or we, we are or we did let it expire because the council voted if we could not get the other four plus million from a grant situation that we wouldn't do it. So we, we not only are just not talking about the roundabout, we're actually letting go of a half a million dollars that we've already been granted because we're not doing the roundabout. So I just really wanted to add that as another piece, another nail in the coffin of the roundabout. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Alderman Goodman. Everybody vote tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's going to be the last word. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alderman. City Administrator. I have nothing to add tonight. Thank you. Thank you, John and City Attorney. I have nothing either. Thank you, Mayor. Very good. Approval of the agenda for this evening. Alderman Widener. Move to approve the agenda for the April 3rd, 2017 City Council regular meeting. Second. Motion and a second. Any changes to that agenda? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The agenda is approved for this evening. We have several sets of minutes that need approval also. Alderman Widener. I move to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2017 City Council Budget Workshop Meeting, to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2017 City Council Regular Meeting, to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2017 City Council Closed Session, and to approve the minutes of the March 27th, 2017 Finance and Personnel Committee of the Whole Regular Meeting. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion of those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The minutes are approved. The consent agenda for this evening reads as follows. Item 6A, offer first reading of ordinance number 02017-15, adopting the City of Warrenville FY 2018 Municipal Budget. B, accept staff recommendation, waive second reading, and pass ordinance 02017-16, amending the City Code to increase the number of class A2 liquor licenses from eight to nine for Amici Restaurant. C, waive second reading and pass ordinance 02017-17, amending the FY 2017 budget for the final engineering design services of the Landon Avenue Sanitary Sewer Extension in the amount of $16,000. $600. D, accept staff recommendation and pass resolution R2017-11, awarding the low bid for the 2017 road program to Geneva Construction Company of Aurora, Illinois, in the amount of one million, oh, I'm not used to these numbers, one million three hundred thirteen thousand two hundred eighty-nine dollars and seventy-four cents. E, accept finance committee recommendation and approve a sponsorship for Warrenville Youth and Family Services in the amount of $500 to help fund their second annual volunteer appreciation event. F, accept finance committee recommendation and increase the summer days allocation for the Warrenville Park District to $30,000 and direct staff to increase the total event funding to $41,000 in the FY 2018 budget. G, accept finance committee recommendation and increase the tuition reimbursement program cap to $25,080 uh, for FY 2018. H, receive and file minutes of the Tourism and Arts Commission regular meeting held on February 16, 2017. 
I received and filed minutes of the Board of Fire and Police Commission regular meeting held on February 18th, 2017. J receive and file draft minutes of the Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals regular meeting held on March 23rd, 2017. K receive and file report of invoices paid up to March 29th, 2017 in the amount of $56,297.91. And L authorized expenditures for invoices due on or before April 17th, 2017 in the amount of $83,065.66. <clears throat> excuse me, and 66 cents. Alderman Widener. Um, just going back to item I, I believe it was February 28th, 2017. I'm not sure I heard you say that. I think you might have said the 18th. Okay. Okay. So with that, I move to approve the agenda as presented by Mayor David Brummel. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. I have a roll call, please. Alderman Ashauer. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Barry. Aye. Alderman Davalos. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Thank you, Emily. Under our regular agenda, we have a continuation, potential continu continuation of the uh, FY 2018 budget discussion. John, would you like to lead that off? And s Kevin first, you said. Oh, Kevin looks very eager there. Yeah. He's got something that he wants to share. Yeah. Kevin Dahlstrand, our Finance and Information Services Director. Please, Kevin. I would uh, like to go back, actually, and correct a statement, statement I made earlier to Alderman G G Goodman that uh, the two hundred thousand dollars in the hotel mo motel fund did um, did not o appear only in the memo. It's it's not in the numbers either, and it wasn't for my lack of wanting to get it out of there. I just apparently did not do that, so that will be done before we do go final. And I I just wanted to cor cor correct that as I. I, as I look back, I re realize that it is st st still in there, and I, I wanted it known that it, it will be removed. Good catch, Alderman Goodman. Thank you. Uh, any, anybody else? Alderman Widener. Yes, I um, wanted to thank Finance Director Dahlstrand for um, a pie chart that he gave us this evening as a handout. I thought it was important as we're considering the budget to realize the taxing body percentages of the 2015 levy. And if you, if you look closely at the percentages, and I'll hold it up, you'll see that you know if you're looking at a property tax dollar, uh, approximately a little less than 10 cents of that property tax dollar would go to the city of Warrenville. The vast majority of your property tax dollars goes to the school district. Um, and you know things like the forest preserve cost you less than two cents, and uh, on the property tax dollar, and your services provided by DuPage County are a little bit more than uh, two cents. So I thought this pie chart was really valuable to understand uh, the impact of uh, property taxes in Warrenville, and that you're paying a little bit less than a dime on every property tax dollar to the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Anyone else? Alderman Davalos. Yes, I just have another clarification point on the decision packages. So I'm looking at the budget on, on page 291 and 292. You may have clarified this, but I just want to make sure that I understand this. So it's a page that talks about, uh, it, talks about it talks about the decision packages by fund. And I'm particularly interested in the TIF 4 um, page. On all the other funds, all the items mentioned add up to the total. But on the TIF 4, on page 292, the last one, it's, it's again this sanitary sewer, this Landon Avenue deal. Um, those numbers add up to more. It, it looks like that the part for the sanitary sewer wasn't included in there. The um, the forty one thousand and the four ten four hundred ten thousand in the total of three hundred and there is another piece of of oh I see where you're ta ta talking about correct I see what you're saying now uh, I'll go back and refoot and make sure it it, it adds up uh, um, that should sh should be added into the, that total I'll clar clarify oh, okay. it before we go final thank you thank you Alderman anyone else okay. Um, that's the end of that discussion, unless you have anything to add, John? 
Nothing, very good. We have nothing under unfinished business, nothing under new business, nothing for closed session tonight. Um, before we adjourn, I would um, echo the advice of Alderman Goodman, please get out and vote tomorrow. Local elections are very important. They affect your life um, more than national elections. Uh, the numbers are smaller, your vote means a lot. Please do vote. Uh, you have from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. There's not much of an excuse that you don't have time to do it. So please vote. May I have a motion to adjourn? Alderman Widener. I move to adjourn. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Good evening.